Farming In farming, a farmer prepares the land for cultivation, sows the seed, and applies fertilizers and manures. The sprouting of the seed and the growth of the crop take place naturally. The farmer takes different crops depending on the fertility of the land. For preparing items like papars, we need to process black gram or urad which is a farm product. Using it, we produce an altogether new item that is more useful. In a grocery shop, nothing is produced or processed, but items like papars are made available for sale. Institutes like banks make available and manage the money required for or obtained through activities like farming, production or trade. You must have now realized the differences in the different activities described here. Activities such as farming, production or trade are called occupations. Human occupations are classified on the basis of these differences. Let us try to know more about human occupations and their types. Primary occupations. Some occupations are directly related with nature. Man just collects and uses the things that are available in nature. Such occupations are called primary occupations. For example, lumbering, fishery, agriculture, animal husbandry, mining, collection of forest produce, etc. The following are the characteristics of primary occupations. These occupations totally depend on nature. A lot of manpower is required. Depending on the availability of natural resources, different primary occupations are carried out in different areas. Compared to the labor inputs, the returns are quite low. Secondary occupations. Through primary occupations, we get different types of things. These are used as raw material and processed to obtain new and more useful things which are called finished products. Occupations that involve manufacturing of finished products from raw material are called secondary occupations. For example, obtaining cloth from cotton or sugar from sugarcane. The following are the characteristics of secondary occupations. The items manufactured in these occupations have better utility and greater value. From perishable materials, long-lasting items can be obtained. Machinery is used on a large scale in these occupations. Mass production of items becomes possible. Compared to the labor inputs, the returns are high. Now, let us learn about tertiary occupations. Tertiary occupations. Some occupations are supportive to the primary and secondary occupations. To manufacture sugar or jaggery, sugarcane has to be taken to the sugar factories or the place of jaggery manufacturing. Arrangements have to be made to take the sugar or jaggery to grocery shops to make it available for sale. As a result of this, transport or marketing services come into existence. We make use of post offices, telephones, etc. for communication. Television and radio are used for mass communication and information dissemination. All these services and also activities like sharpening weapons, giving tin wash to cooking utensils and many others support the primary and secondary occupations. All supportive occupations like transportation and banking are called tertiary occupations. The following are the characteristics of tertiary occupations. These occupations do not produce any item. These occupations provide services to the society. To avail of these services, one has to pay the cost. 
Apart from these, certain services need special skills. Such services are included in quaternary occupations. For example, doctors, lawyers, teachers, etc. Friends, now that we have seen the classification of occupations, let us see the importance of each of these categories of occupations. Importance of classification of occupations. The classification of occupations helps the following. To ascertain the level of economic development of a region. To make proper planning of the human resources for the development. If a region has a greater proportion of people engaged in secondary and tertiary occupation, it is considered to be a developed region. For example, western part of Europe. As against this, the region having more people engaged in primary occupations is called a developing region. For example, equatorial region of Central Africa. Human occupations and natural resources. All the human occupations directly or indirectly depend on natural resources. Agriculture is generally found in the river-built plains. Sugar industry is located in a region that cultivates sugarcane. Let us see the utilization, more so, the exploitation of resources leads to environmental problems. The fertility of soils get lowered due to continuous cultivation of one and the same crop. The use of chemical fertilizers and insecticides degrades the soil. Industrialization leads to air pollution and sound pollution. Excessive mining and deforestation have also given rise to the present-day environmental problems.